What was the most embarrassing incident in Muhammad's life? How about when Satan put verses in the Prophet's mouth? Let's talk about why Muslims want to explain away the story of the satanic verses. Now, while I am fully aware of the fact that many of our Muslim fr friends are distancing themselves from this story and even making claims that it's just a fabricated story, with me here in studio, our dear brother David Wood, and we are going to show you without a shadow of a doubt that there are multiple sources, Islamic sources that is, that affirms the authenticity of this story. David, welcome back. So. What about the satanic verses and these claims that all of a sudden now it is really a fabricated story? Well, this is a, without a doubt one of the most embarrassing moments for anyone ever. Uh, and when you're talking about the life of Muhammad, that's saying something because he had a lot of really embarrassing moments. I mean, it was a massive embarrassment when he married the wife of his own adopted son. It was massively uh, embarrassing when he uh, ate poison. He was tricked into eating some poison. Um, by a, a Jewish woman whose, whose family he had slaughtered. So you have all sorts of uh, stories like that with Muhammad. Uh, this one, very, very, very troubling to Muslims. And that's why your average Muslim now rejects it. And even if you show him source after source after source, showing that the story is authentic, they'll still, re they'll still reject it just because they, they, can't, they can't wrap their minds around the implications of this story. So uh, first, let's let's go ahead and read one example of the story. So I'll read uh, the version in Ibn Asak, and then we'll talk about uh, how many sources there actually are for this story. So uh, for anyone who isn't familiar with the story of the Satanic Verses, basically, um, Muhammad wanted his tribe to convert to Islam, and they weren't. They thought it was. They thought his religion was uh, ridiculous. They didn't believe that he was a prophet. And so he was really, really longing for his some sort of revelation that would help his tribe convert. And then he got one, uh, but the, he only helped his tribe by promoting belief in their goddesses, in three pagan goddesses. And uh, let's go ahead and read the story in Ibn Asak. This is, well, go, we'll go into a little bit of detail here. Now, the apostle was anxious for the welfare of his people, wishing to attract them as far as he could. When the apostle saw that his people turned their backs on him, and he was pained by their estrangement from what he had brought them from God, he longed that there should come to him from God a message that would reconcile his people to him. So he wanted a revelation that would help his people uh, believe what he was teaching them. Because of his love for his people and his anxiety over them, it would delight him if the obstacle that made his task so difficult could be removed. Then God sent down by the star when it sets, your comrade errs not and is not deceived. He speaks not from his own desire. And when he reached his words, have you thought of Alat, Alusa, and Manat, the third, the other? So mm -hmm. the, that's a verse of Surah 53 of the Quran. And that's st that part is still in the Quran. Have you have you thought of Allah, Alusa, and Manat, the third, the other? When he reached that part, so Muhammad's receiving the revelation, and he gets to that part, talking about these three pagan goddesses. What happens? When, the, uh, when he, uh, Satan, oh, let, me, let me go and read the part over again. When he reached his words, have you thought of Allah, Alusa, and Manat, the third, the other? Satan when he was meditating upon it and desiring to bring it to his people, put upon his tongue, <laughs> these are the exalted cranes whose intercession is approved. So it specifically says that Satan put words on Muhammad's tongue. Yes. So when Muhammad got to the revelate part of the revelation from God, saying, mentioning these three pagan goddesses, that's when Satan jumped in and put words on his tongue, mm -hmm. saying that these are the exalted cranes whose intercession is to be hoped for. Right. So the idea is that these are like bird goddesses, and it's okay to pray to the bird goddesses. You still understand that Allah is the main God, but there are these bird goddesses who intercede for you, and you, you can pray to them because they'll just carry your prayers up to Allah. 
And that's really the, uh, the idea behind idolatry. I mean, most idol worshipers uh, believe that uh, the idol they're worshiping just will intercede between them and the actual mm-hmm. deity. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yep. So the story continues. When the Quraysh heard that, so that's Muhammad's tribe. When the Quraysh heard that, namely that Muhammad had affirmed that it's okay now, to it's halal, to pray to their pagan goddesses. When the Quraysh heard that, they were delighted and greatly pleased at the way in which he spoke of their gods, and they listened to him. While the believers were holding that what the prophet brought them from their Lord was true, not suspecting a mistake or a vain desire or a slip, and when he reached the prostration and the end of the surah in which he prostrated himself, the Muslims prostrated themselves when their prophet prostrated, confirming what he brought and obeying his command. And the polytheists of Quraysh and others who were in the mosque prostrated when they heard the mention of their gods so that everyone in the mosque, believer and unbeliever, prostrated. So notice, Muhammad delivers a revelation saying, hey guys, we can pray to three pagan goddesses. And all his followers say, okay, and they bow down. It's yep. like, wait, I thought these were the guys that you've, you've shown that everything has to be the pure worship of Allah. Exactly. Um, and, but then the, the pagans bowed down in honor of it as well. Then the people dispersed and the Quraysh went out, delighted at what had been said about their gods, saying, Muhammad has spoken of our gods in splendid fashion. He alleged in what he read that they are exalted cranes whose intercession is to appro- is approved. So everyone's happy. The, the, the Muslims are happy. The pagans are happy. Everyone's happy that, that Islam now promotes polytheism. The news reached the prophet's companions who were in Abyssinia, it being reported that the Quraysh had accepted Islam. So Muhammad had some companions who had fled to avoid uh, having uh, any problems with the Quraysh. But now the Quraysh had accepted Islam. They're all bowing down in honor of this revelation promoting polytheism. So some men started to return while others remained behind. Then Gabriel came to the apostle and said, what have you done, Muhammad? You have read to these people something I did not bring you from God, and you have said what he did not say to you. The apostle was bitterly grieved and was greatly in fear of God. So God sent down a revelation, for he was merciful to, to, to him, comforting him and making light of the affair and telling him that every prophet and apostle before him desired as he desired and wanted what he wanted. And Satan interjected something into his desires as he had on his tongue. So Allah actually calms Muhammad down by saying, don't worry, this happens to all prophets. Right. All prophets um, want what's, you know, want their, their people to accept them. And Satan always inserts revelations into their teachings. So he just accused everyone of doing the exact same, same thing, thing. Exactly. that he's doing. Exactly. So God annulled what Satan had suggested and God established his verses, i.e. you are just like the prophets and apostles. Then God sent down, we have not sent a prophet or apostle before you, but when Satan, uh, but when he longed, Satan cast suggestions on his longing. But God will annul what Satan has suggested. Then God will establish his verses, God being knowing and wise. And that's Surah 22, verse 52 of the Quran. God's response to the story of the satanic verses was, don't worry, Muhammad, it, everyone does this. All the prophets deliver revelations from the devil from time to time. So don't feel so bad. Uh, everyone does it. And this is absolutely amazing. This is the guy we're all supposed to believe. Mm-hmm. He admittedly delivers a revelation from Satan. And then the justification is, yeah, but all prophets deliver revelations from Satan because their desires influence their revelations. I mean, this is absolutely insane and ridiculous. But as far as the the sources, because Muslims... Uh, now reject the source. Right. Muslims now reject the story. Um, but we have this story all over the place, right? I now have 50 sources on the satanic verses, 50. And just let me tell you who these go, who these stories go back to, right? Of the sources that report various versions of the satanic verses, six of them go back to Kab al-Karazi, one of Islam's early, uh, one, one of Islam's greatest early Quran scholars. Five go back to Urwa ibn al-Zubair, an early Meccan scholar who's known as the founder of the study of the life of Muhammad. He was also Aisha's nephew, Abu Bakr's grandson, and the son of Abu Bakr's daughter, Asma. 
one of the first 20 converts to Islam. So five of them go back to him. Two go back to Abu, uh, Abu Bakr ibn Abdul Rahman ibn al-Harith, one of the top scholars in Islamic law during the first century of Islam. Five go back to Abu al aliya al-Basri, another of the greatest Quran scholars of the first century. He studied the Quran with Caliph Umar, with Ubay ibn Kab, with Zayd ibn Thabit, and with Ibn Abbas. This guy's reporting the Satanic verses. Two go back to al-Sudi, another early scholar who studied with Ibn Abbas. One comes from the tafsir of Muhammad uh, Ibn al Sa'ib al Kalbi, an early commentator who composed the longest tafsir that had been written up until his time. Four reports go back to Qatada ibn Diyama, one of Islam's uh, greatest early commentators. One goes back to al Dahak, uh, a first century expert in tafsir. One goes back to Ikrama, a slave of Ibn Abbas and an expert on the life of Muhammad. We have six reports that go back to Ibn Abbas himself, the founder of Quranic studies. Correct. And we have several that go back to Said ibn Jubair, one of the leading Quranic scholars of his time and one of the top students of Ibn Abbas. So this story is all over the first century. Right. Muslims later, they're embarrassed by it and they just say, no, this never happened because they can't, they, they can't deal with the idea of their prophet delivering a revelation from the devil and then saying, yeah, but, but all prophets do it. So no harm, no foul. I know. And it's a sad thing really when uh, you know, especially I'm speaking to you, my Muslim friends, that your prophet actually was tricked by Satan to receive revelations thinking that it is from God and then later, allegedly, received a rebuke from Gabriel, recanted the story. So my question to you is this, how much of the Quran was like this? How much of the Quran was a trickery from Satan? And how do you know that Muhammad for sure heard it from the mouth of Gabriel, not from the mouth of Satan? And even the Quran admits that Satan has done it before, and now the Quran also admits that it was done to Muhammad. And therefore, you and I won't have really any way of discerning this part of the Quran was authentic. This part was from Satan. We already have an incident that a verse or couple, in this case, slipped into the collection of the Quran. And yes, you can say he was rebuked for that and it was removed. But even when you deny the story you still have to ask yourself this question, why do you have a story like this in the first place? So that's my question to you. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.